Great day, it's Apostle Terrell, and I want to welcome you to Truths That Transform. Jesus said in John 8, 32, that you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free, will set you free. So we know from that, that it's only the truth of God that can set us free from mindsets, attitudes, behaviors, even belief systems that we've carried all of our lives. The Apostle Paul goes on to say in Romans, the 12th chapter, to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The greatest battle that you and I have is the battle of our mind. What to do, when to do it, how to do it, should we do it. These things must be centered in the kingdom of God. Truths to transform promises to bring you the truth of Christ, the truth of his word that will set you free out of any hardship, difficulties, bondages that you're walking in. How? Through the transforming of your mind. It's God's truth. It's the word that Jesus is that truly makes us a different individual, living life in the way that he expected us to. And that's what I want for you. So join me with truths that transform and watch your life be changed for the better. God bless you. Take care. Peace. Different than you. Uh, but I do believe now that uh, we, we, we must talk about the family. I think we need to talk about family right now because we need to know where our families are. But that is only created uh, when we begin to reconnect with one another. And uh, as this pandemic, pandemic is ramping up and increasing in some parts of our nation, maybe in the city where you're, you're viewing, I think it's very important that we, uh, for lack of a better word, we just re-harness our family, that we reconvene as family because you and your family have been through a tremendous amount of uh, 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 life-altering experiences throughout the last 20 or 23 months, um, 23 weeks, I've lost count. But it has been very challenging for families adopting the new normals, uh, coming back and redeeming and spending more time together than we have in a long time, uh, children growing, attitudes, mindsets changing, uh, adults and parents moving in the different ways in their lives. And even if you're a single person through all of these times, your home has become a different place because you've become a different person. And uh, there's so much that I believe that needs to come from the family in times like these. And I hope that I make it clear uh, through, this, uh, through this word. So let, 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 let's dive into this. I turn in your in your Bibles to uh, Genesis, the first chapter. Genesis, the first chapter is where I want you to turn in your Bibles. And I'll, I'll speak from there, but I, I first just want to uh, share my heart a little bit and just help us all to get into the place of family. Please don't leave this gathering early because we are going to partake of communion um, as we wrap this, uh, this, this time of ministry up this morning. I'll, I'll share with you that uh, the, the concept, the idea of family was not something that man came up with, but God the creator is the one who came up with the concept of family. He's the originator of it. And so I want to more, more than get into nuts and bolts, in this first message, I just want to kind of lay foundation and bring us back into remembrance of what it was that God did and what God intends in some capacities for uh, marriage, but very much, I mean, not marriage, but family on very much a, uh, a grassroots level. And so we'll, we'll work uh, through that. But it's very important that we're plugged in to God's heart and mind whether you, again, are single, uh, you're still considered a family unit, and there is an understanding to have and a way to conduct yourself that is very, very important as it aligns itself with the kingdom of God. And then there are those of you who are in your home and you have children. This message is extremely important for you. Uh, we'll make it a series so that you can have it you can pass it to your children, your children's children. It can, can become an heirloom 
of greater value than anything that you could pass to them. And so it's going to be good to take hold of these understandings and these teachings. Uh, also, those of you who uh, maybe your children are not in the house anymore, but you have grandchildren, you have grandnieces, grandnephews. Uh, some of you who are single may have nieces or nephews who uh, uh, spend a lot of time with you. Well, they all need to understand family. We all need to understand the value and the importance of family and uh, the good things that, that family are supposed to produce in the earth. So as I said earlier, God is the originator of family. Uh, family was not an afterthought to God. He didn't create the world uh, in, in six days and all of a sudden say, oops, I, I, I forgot about family. It, it was not an afterthought of God. God always had family in his mind. Why? Because he is a father. Our father who art in heaven. Fathers think about family. As a spiritual father, I think of my, my church family. As a natural father, I think of my natural family. But as a father, I am always consumed with thinking about those that God has joined me to naturally and spiritually, and then those he's joined me to spiritually. So again, I say that, 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 that God had a concept in his mind to pull people together and to call them family. Now, I, I, want, I don't want you to shut down on me because you've heard messages on family, uh, but it doesn't mean that I know how to have a productive family. Knowing is doing. Just because we may not have argued in three months or just because our finances look better or just because we have jobs or kids are in school, it doesn't mean that my family is together. It means just those things that I just said. Your money's okay, you haven't argued in six months, and your kids are in school, etc., etc. That's all it really means. And so through this pandemic, we have had time to really uh, get a focus on our family. And I hope that's what you've been doing in these times, is really looking at my family and saying, here's where we really are. Apostle Charlene Glover, who was uh, in Albany, Georgia for many years, but now she's in Houston, Texas, told me one time, one thing. She said, Terrell, when people show you who they are, believe them. When people show you who they are, believe them. And often people show us who they are, and we don't believe them. We keep waiting for another them to come forth, but they have shown us who they are and what they say and what their deeds are, how they conduct their family, how they conduct their personal life, how they uh, handle time and the things in their lives. People show you who they are, then believe it. Well, through this pandemic, your family has shown you who it is. Your family has shown you who it is. Therefore, I would say unto you, believe what you've seen about your family. And if you have seen things that are good uh, in the name of Jesus and with the, 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 the permission to use bad grammar, then just declare they're going to be gooder. Uh, if they have been bad, declare they're going to be gooder. If they've been indifferent, declare they're going to be better. But either way, your family has shown you who they are. Your husband has shown you who he is. Your wife has shown you who she is. Your children have shown you who they are. Uh, if it's an extended family or, or many families living together, they have shown you who they are through their, again, their words and their thoughts and their disease, uh, not the disease, words, thoughts, and their, and their accents. And we want to believe that. Trust that there is no disease in the name of Jesus in your family. But, but hear this, you, you and your family were a thought in the mind of God before the foundation of the world. Before God even laid out the world, he had already walked through everything, every person that would be in the earth, and God had a family for you to be in. You've heard it said before that you can't pick your family. You can't pick your family. And so it becomes our responsibility to learn how to work through uh, in our family, that which would make us stronger, that which would make us better, but more than anything, that would help us to be advancers of the kingdom of God. And I'll talk about that even more because that's the thing that the body of Christ has to get into the understanding of 
is just as we say my life is not my own, my family is not my own. My family's not my own. If I'm a child, if I'm the leader of that family, my family is not my own. My family belongs to God. And I must live making sure that God is carried out in my family. I'm lifting family up because I believe that there's, if there's anything in times like these, because of what we have been through, we need to be focusing on family right now. God's impacting of the world, this very clearly, because I, I don't know if you've heard this before, but God's impacting of the world, uh, its transformation is intended to come through the family first. God's intent for impacting the world was that it, the impact would come from the family first, then the church, not the other way around. What we primarily believe or act out in the body of Christ is that world transformation, regional impact and influence, changing uh, uh, a society is supposed to come, especially for believers, we believe it's supposed to come through the church. But that's not the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ intended for the family unit to be that major agent of cultural transformation, not the church. Let me help us with that. While Adam and Eve were the first ecclesia, before they were an ecclesia, they were a family. Before they were a legislative body who counseled with God to administrate and facilitate the earth, before they were that as believers of God, they were first a family. God made Adam, and how about this? Eve just woke up married. <laughs> how about that? God makes Adam, uh, and then Eve wakes up married. They became the authoritative executors of the kingdom of God as a family. God's whole purpose was to take this family and allow them to be men and women who reflect him and do it as a family. And God's intent for them was that the wiles of the devil, the gates of hell, would not prevail against them. That was God's intent. And whatsoever they bound on earth would be bound in heaven, and whatsoever they loosed on earth would be loosed in heaven. And so God gives Adam and Eve as a family the authority that families are still supposed to walk in today. There is not a family that has been created in the earth by God who was not supposed to live out the mandates of God to advance the kingdom wherever that family goes. If that family goes to the supermarket together, people should see the kingdom moving. If that family's on vacation together, people should see the kingdom vacating. If families are in the movies together, number one, it should be a kingdom movie that the family's in. Doesn't mean it's a, a movie about the Bible, but it's a movie that is centered in kingdom principles, that we are not showing others a different way into a life of fulfillment, which I'll talk about in a few moments ago. God wanted his family to be the distributors and demonstrators of his kingdom. That's what he wanted Adam and Eve to be. Now, what, what I hope is happening in you is I hope that, that, that you are not taking offense with me. Jesus says, blessed is he who is not offended by the things I say. I trust that you're not taking offense with me over what I'm saying this morning, but that you are taking an, a healthy inventory and doing healthy introspection, not unto damnation or condemnation, but you're doing a healthy introspection of your family. Is this what we look like? When we go out, do we look like chaos or do we look like order? Do we move like chaos? Is, is my child the one crawling across the back bench in a restaurant or is my child 
moving and operating under the influence of the kingdom of God, which might be the rod. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but how's my family living and operate? And, and what I want you to do as I'm talking about family is I want you to begin to take these things, dads or moms, heads of households, the most influencing person in the household, whatever that looks like. I'd love for dads to be the most influencing agent in the household, but sometimes dads just aren't. But as long as you're undergirding and standing with the woman of God in the house, that's cool. But whatever that might look like, what I'm trying to get us to understand is that we've got to take inventory of our families and find out, are we reflecting God? God didn't just make me, God made my family. And often in, in, in the things of God, we get focused on ourselves and we forget about the unit that we are joined to. Whether it's a job or a business or ministry, there's a unit that we're joined to and there is a unit that every single one of us are joined through. So, too, so God's not just looking at us, but he's looking at our family, and he's saying, I want you to be a family who rules in the earth, who subdues in the earth, who dominates in the earth, but that ruling and subduing and dominating must first begin with that particular family. Are we ruling and subduing and dominating the things that are keeping us from being a healthy family? What does a, fa a healthy family look like? Let me just say this because God's graced me in our congregation to be a point of influence. Let's just look. What, 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 are you a family of influence? Meaning, uh, uh, if I come to your house, can I see and hear everything? Just taking me as the point of influence because greatly and humbly, uh, gladly rather than humbly, most of you honor and respect me. But can I come into your house go anywhere, see anything, listen to any con conversation, and discover that it's all about the kingdom. Well, that's, th that, that's what God wants our lives to be like, but that accountability should be to Holy Spirit, not to me, but often we connect our accountability with a person and not the Spirit of Christ. And so that's why I wanted to use that example. But in our families, there, there, there should be ruling, subduing, and dominating over anything that comes against our family and anything that God calls our family to take on. And we should do those things in love. We should do them in the nature of God, in the character of God, in the servitude of God. That's how families should live together. It's what God intended for Adam and Eve. Stay, stay with me. Stay with me. So where am I? I, I really applaud the efforts of the body of Christ uh, because the body of Christ is trying as hard as it can <laughs> to advance and increase. Uh, it's doing the best that it can to, to enlarge and to excel. My, my challenge is that a lot of that is centered uh, 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 not in Christianity, not in the things of Jesus, but a lot of it is centered in inspiration and motivation, but not transformation. And so I appreciate the body of Christ trying to, to thrust forward, but we must thrust forward in Jesus and his principles, not something that we read somewhere and then try and work that into the kingdom of God. If, if, if you want to know more about leadership, it's in the kingdom. If you want to know more about finances, they're in the kingdom. If you want to know about relational development, it's all in the kingdom. And so we have our own manual that allows us to walk in greater strength and advance and increase and impact and excel. But there are other things that we can read, but seek first the kingdom of God. And so where our families are concerned, we have got to be men and women of the kingdom who are advancing, uh, uh, who are increasing, who are excelling, who are impacting, but we've got to do it in Christ. And so there's a world out there who needs to see not just us, but what we came from. Because often the world will not just meet us, it will meet our family. It wants to see what household we came from what address we came from, what mindset and attitude, what generational structure we came from. That's why people often ask questions about our lives is to find out what's your family like? What's your family about? And we must understand that there are nations that need to be touched 
by the Spirit of Christ that we carry. And so God wants to build out families who can just as well impact the nations like many people believe the church is supposed to impact nations. Jesus in Acts 1 admonishes the disciples, well, he doesn't admonish, he, he, he uh, uh, enlightens them and says that uh, you will receive power, I think it's Acts 1, 8, you will receive power to become witnesses of me, talking about Jesus. Now, here's the thing. He said, in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. He says, you, you'll be witnesses to me in first Jerusalem. Now, understand this. Jerusalem is symbolic of your home. He said, he said we got to do stuff in Jerusalem before we get way out here into the outermost parts of the earth. Families have to become unified and become learners and ultimately masters of the things of God in their home first. Believers are often asked questions in the marketplace by people who want to know different things about us, but we, we are strongest when what we are talking about is actually happening in our lives. Many times believers are asked, well, how can I do this in my family and this in my family and that in my family? Well, we're better when Jerusalem looks like Jerusalem should look, when our personal homes reflect God. Now, the resetting of 2020, which is what we're in right now, holds in it the going back into Jerusalem. Stay with me now. I, I need you to understand this. Because God, follow me, God is back to the beginning. That's what we have to catch in all of this societal and uh, 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 unrest, in all of this pandemic, in all of this economic downturn, in this job loss in the marketplace, please, body of Christ, understand that God is back to beginnings. And when we come into a place that begins to, to bring the strippings of our present day economy and society, then we who are called of God and by God and called as gods, we must understand God is trying to teach us something and it's best learned when we go back to beginnings. So what am I talking about beginnings? Beginnings meaning in Genesis. In, 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 in the book of Genesis, which is the Old Testament, uh, uh, God begins with the Adam family. He begins with the Adam family, Adam and Eve and their children, and then there's the genealogy of Adam's family. God begins with that in the book of Genesis, the book of, of beginnings. So when God is dealing with the Adam's family, he's dealing with family. And then God in the New Testament, in the book of Acts, he goes back to beginnings. And in the book of Acts, in chapter 2, verse 46, we see that there was activity that happened and the church was built in households. And so in Genesis, we have the beginning, which is family, right? And then in, in Acts, we come over to the household. What is in a household? A family. A family is in a household. So the beginning of the Old Testament begins with what? Family. The beginning of the New Testament begins with households. Families and households, what did I say earlier? They are to be the primary transforming agents of nations. That's what they should be. The transformation of a nation should begin in its families. And it is from the New Testament that God continues the work of kingdom advancement and moving the body of Christ, but he does it in households. What we should have learned in this pandemic and during this present societal unrest is that God, hear this, because of what family means to the stability of a nation, is more concerned 
with this proton institution, this first institution called the family, who was made to serve his purposes. And God, in all this that is going on, is more concerned about the family than he is anything else. Well, it doesn't appear like that. I know it doesn't because we're watching a secular media who is not focused on the family component. Okay, so, so, so it, because of the slant of the age where primarily uh, uh, media propagates and promotes things that destroy family, society promotes things that destroys family, then we're not hearing a lot about the family unit because the true desire of so many people who call themselves progressive, they're not progressive in the kingdom, they're progressive in godless ideologies. And what is a part of their godless ideology is how they see family. And they would rather steal, kill, and destroy family than build family up. And that's why the body of Christ, hear me out there, you must understand what your family is supposed to look like or you will wake up and it will look like something that it went to bed not looking like. In a moment, in a heartbeat, in a twinkling of an eye, the family structure, definition, understanding, operation can change. But we have to be men and women who are wise enough and discerning enough to see that family is changing, not necessarily because people are discovering who they are. No, it's deeper than that. It's about annihilating the first institution of God. When you have godless sources and resources that are fueling the earth, they are not going to make God the most important factor in what they're doing. And that's why so much of what you see, again, is seeking to steal and kill and destroy the family like we know it. But the body of Christ has to stand up because God made the family to serve his purposes more than anything. That, 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 that's what I have to realize in my family is that the purpose of my family is not to serve enterprise. The purpose of my family is not to serve the marketplace, meaning that being number one in our life. The, the focus of our family is, is not a bigger house or car, but the focus of our family is to discover the purposes and the way that we are supposed to serve God. And, and that's bigger than the church. We'll talk about that later. But that's bigger than the church. It's a place that God has called us to take up. Our families have been put together by God, again, to serve his purposes. So, so, so man of God, in, in, in your house, what is your family's purpose in God? Woman of God, in your house, what's your family's purpose in God. Children, do you even know why your family is together? See, I would encourage you if you don't know or if you do know that you need to pin a mission statement for your family. This is who the Joneses are. This is who the uh, 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 Machiavellis are. <laughs> this is who the, the Jacksons and, 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 and the Smiths and, and who, this is who we are. That, 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 that should be pinned by every family. Why? Because if I know who we are, I know who we're not. If I know what we do, I know what we don't do. If I create boundaries and, cre and, and, and move in roles and move in vision with my family, then everyone in my family understands who we are. But most families have no idea who they are. And their identity is in a fraternity, in a sorority, it's in a business, it's in a social action group, it's in all of these gambits of things that are out there, but it's not centered in the purposes of Christ. Why has our family been bought together? And through this series, I'm hoping that you'll take time with your family and discover this. Who are we? Why did God put us together? It wasn't because you were attracted to me and I was attracted to you. 
It wasn't because I'm light skinned, you dark skinned, and I wanted caramel. I mean, I mean, I mean all of these, it wasn't because you had a good income and I had a good income and we, and we could afford it. It wasn't because we shacked together long enough. I mean, I mean why, why is your family together? It's got to be bigger than we wanted to have legal sex. It's got to be bigger than we just, we just wanted to, 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 to have children together. We, we, we just loved each other. And so, we, no, no, no. There, there's got to be a, a purpose that God reveals to you that he put you together for. Because when, 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 when what's up comes down and what's in comes out and what once was, was, was black hair becomes gray, you better have a vision. You, you better have a purpose for the family and what we're to do because those things that are on the, on the surface will not be what holds you. But the Lord, just as he is expecting us to become who we should be as individuals, he's expecting our family to discover and carry out the purpose of God that he has for us. To walk intimately with him is what God would have us to do as a part of our purpose and then take on his nature and take on his mind toward all things. Hear, hear me again, your, your, your family. Your, your family should be striving to walk intimately with God and, 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 and take on his nature and his mind toward all things and become a unit of people under one roof who are a collaboration of temples where God resides. That, 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 that's what sh should be happening in our homes and, and in, our, in our families. We become a unit of people under one roof who are all a, a, a collaboration of temples. Do you not know that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost? Your nine-year-old, your 12-year-old, your 18-year-old, the mama, the daddy, I trust that they are saved in being saved. They are all temples of the Holy Ghost. So you got all these temples of God that are in the house under one roof, walking intimately with God into the purpose that God has for us. And it might not be what mama and daddy before you did because they could have missed the purpose. And it might look differently than what grandma and grandpa did or great grandma and grandpa did because they were in a different dispensation of time. If you were for that dispensation, you would have been born then. But because you were born in this dispensation, then there's something that you and the family that you're a part of are supposed to be and do. And that's why unity is so important in the family. And, 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 and that's why disagreements have to be ironed out and done away with. And that's why fixes must come and true solves centered in love must happen in families because one of the greatest places for offense is the family. Where mamas walk around offended by daddies, children offended by each other, parents offended by children, children offended by parents. I mean, it just goes on and on for years and years. And, and one thing that puts an end to that is discovering that, let me tell you something. This is not who God made us to be. We've got to discover that. And that's what we have to walk out. I know it's, I, I, I know it's quiet in your living room right now. But, 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 but these are the things that matter more than anything uh, right now. Hear me prophetically, hear me prophetically. The families in this time who will join in their arcs and allow themselves by the dictates of the massive floods of national, cultural, regional, local, and communal chaos, confusion, and even outright lawlessness to unify them they will see the goodness of God and the fruit of his kingdom, which reigns over all kingdoms. So what is God saying? God is saying the prosperity of your family is in the unity of your family unit. 
The strength of your family, the endurance of your family is in the strength of your family unit. Let, let, let me say something, because I hear in my spirit uh, 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 some people saying, well, well, I, I'm just going to let it stay like, like it is. Well, that's called rebellion. You, you weren't made to let things just stay like they are. You, you were made to be an antidote in your family first. That's why Jerusalem is so important. And when you have your home moving in the way your home should move, every other thing you touch, you become more competent in. In a relationship, in a job, in a business, you become more competent. Even if I'm single, if I'm letting the right things in on my TV, if I'm letting the right people come over to my house, my condo, my apartment, if I'm reading the right things, if the right atmosphere is emanating in my house and I've got my household moving according to God, I become more competent in everything I'm doing because my house is aligned. And we have to be men and women who understand that the chaos and the confusion and the outright lawlessness of our nation is seeking to keep us from seeing the goodness of God. So where is that goodness of God going to be seen? In the family. The family's got to be the place where people look to see the hope they need to see. To see the encouragement, to see the boldness, to see the courage. To see the endurance in times like this. Let me tell you something, y'all. Families are being worn out by this present climate that we're in. I mean, I was driving down the road the other day. <laughs> and, and, and I just said, Lord, this is crazy. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, like, I'm like, this is, this is crazy. Because I, I, you know, I, I don't keep up with stuff good. And, 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 and so now I, got, I keep up with my glasses, my phone, my keys. Now I got to keep up with a mask. That's dangerous for me. So I, I, got, I, I got them in the middle console. I got them in the glove compartment. I, I got them hanging from the gear shift. I... I, I got them everywhere. And then you wonder why, why that area is stinking. <laughs> I'm going to leave that alone. Yeah, Y'all got good breath mask, right. But, but, but I'm, I'm like, this is, this is just a lot, God. And, I, and I'm sanctified, fire baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost. And, 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 and know the word of God, follow God. And, and I'm maxed by this. So I know that families are maxed by this. You, you never thought you'd see your husband so much. You, you, you didn't know your child had so much to say. You're seeing everything. And, 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 and then God says, and that's how you act towards me. Whatever my boys do, 90% of it is what I do to God. <laughs> and God is letting little Junior and Juniorette show you what you look like to God. And God said, and that you feel right there, that's how I feel. I've just got control of it. So I know people are stressed. That, that's why, let me tell you something. They're, and they're talking, and I don't know, and, and I can't say that this is, 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 is God. Uh, it might be me. I don't know. But, but, but if they're saying that this pandemic is getting worse, and in the fall it's going to be worse, and January and February it could be worse. Again, we've got all these worses, and I don't, I don't know what is accurate or true, but it doesn't matter because what I'm teaching we should be doing anyway. So it's not, it's not according to if there's a pandemic or not. But let me tell you something. Y'all, it's going to get worse in society. So we need family. 
That's why I was telling our membership, call your cousins, call your aunties, call anybody that in, in, this, in, your, uh, uh, in your family that don't have a church and don't go to church, call them and tell them to listen to this because what society faces is going to get worse. We haven't seen anything yet as it relates to what's going to be released against the church and against society in coming years. And I'm telling you, you better get connected to your family. Especially that immediate unit. Get your, get your attitudes right, get your, your, your mindsets, your behaviors, get everything intact, everything in order, because with what's coming, you can't afford to fall out with one another. Just, just can't do it. Can't, can't, can't afford to do it. And, and, and so God says, look, I, I want you talking about this because if they're talking about maybe we're going to be back in our homes again in October for a longer period of time or maybe in January or, or February, there are families out there that you can't go into another uh, societal lockdown with your family where it is. You just can't do it. And, and, and I, so I believe that this is the most important thing that God wants spoken right now as a prophetic word because things are going to move into a place where families have got to be unified. Prophetically, families are being influenced and misled by an adversary who does not want us to assemble as one in our homes. Have you noticed that as the pandemic went further, separation in your house Created, more was created. Separation of people, more was created. Why? Because people are trying to get back into their own individualism. And so the adversary is working hard. Hear me. He's working hard to pull your child away even further and deeper than they were pulled away from you. Pull your spouse further away. That, 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 than they were from you or, or pulled unity. You know, you, 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 you need to be doing dinner together and talking, not just doing it and eating, but doing it and talking because there's an adversary that's trying to keep us from assembling as one in our homes. And then with this seduction to move everybody back into society, now they want to put on the brakes and move people back out of society. But this rapid urgency to get people back into society, so much of that was about individualism. Let me get back into doing what I do, acting like I act, being what I want to be without having to live under the accountability and the influence of my household. But God wants us to live as one, this is a time where our nation and, and families are becoming more greatly interdependent. I mean, where they should become more interdependent, not independent. And I know it's Independence Day. I declare my dependence on God, okay? But, 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 but we, 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 we're coming into a time where society is pushing us to be more greatly interdependent upon one another. The hand of God is doing it through society, and we've got to see that or we'll still be pushing to be apart from one another. And no, we need to be in our families depending on one another like we never have before. Loving, caring, sharing. Even if your children are out of your home, on the call, calling them, texting them, emailing them, FaceTiming them, connecting with them. It, it's, it's very important. Hear me prophetically as I talk about that. Hear this. We've seen the shutting down of a nation's mobility. We've seen the shutting down of economics. And every pillar of society we have seen has been halted, greatly altered, or stopped every, altogether. In all the pillars of our society, stuff has been halted, altered, or stopped altogether. And, and what we have to understand that, that like Noah's family, who was placed in an isolated place to unify them, to unify them, to unify them. You're in an isolated place, families, to be unified. Just like Noah did, they did not become 
estranged from one another, but they became more dependent upon one another because of what was going on around them. We have never been this way before. The things that we are seeing, we've never seen before. And what God wants us to understand is that we've got to get more connected right now to move through these things than living in division. If you're going to understand one blood, understand certainly one blood in your family. Here's what God is doing. He's positioning us to be the agency among all of those in the world that brings transformation in the nation. But why is that important? Because as the family goes, so goes the nation. As your family goes, so goes the nation. See, God, God, God could have started in the seven pillars of society in Genesis. He, he could have started with arts and entertainment. He could have started with education. He could have started with government. He could have started with, with business. He could have started with media. He could have started with family. But, but he started with religion. He, he started with the things of God. That's where God started. He could have started anywhere, but, he, but I'm, sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, he started with family, not religion. But he could have started anywhere, knowing that family would be the entity that should be built in him and therefore being over, able to overcome together the faults of itself. Every family has faults, okay? But the way God has designed us to live as families is that we have enough in our families and in us in Christ to overcome the faults of our family, to overcome the shortcomings of our families. This is what God intended for the family to do and how he intended for the family to operate. And he didn't choose any other pillar but the family to begin in. The family is the place where the Spirit of God appears first and nowhere else. Look at Genesis 1, 1, 2. Because I, I, I want to get you moving toward the most important attribute in your family. He, he, hear me. As a matter of fact, if you will get this, you will see a revolution in your family like you've never seen before. If, if you will catch what I'm saying right now, and, and if you're not married, you certainly need to catch this right now. Because she, she has shown you the kind of wife she's going to be. And he has shown you the kind of husband he going to be. Ain't nobody in here that got married or anybody listening that got married that God didn't show you your spouse. And you chose to say, aha, hmm. Or you chose to say, it don't matter. But he showed them to you. And in your wife, he showed you your children. And in your husband, he showed you your children. And, 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 and so everything that God needed to show you, he's shown you. But I'm telling you, if you catch what I'm saying right now, it'll revolutionize your family. And it ain't deep, it's just truth. It says in Genesis 1, in the beginning, God prepared, formed, fashioned, and created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2, the earth was without form and an empty waste, and darkness was upon the face of the very great deep. The Spirit of God was moving, hoovering, brooding over the face of the waters. Let me read that again. In the beginning, God prepared, formed, fashioned, and created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and an empty, very great deep. The Spirit of God was moving, hovering, brooding over the face of the waters. So, so what do we have here? In Genesis 1-2, the earth, it says in Genesis 1, the earth, in verse 2, talked about the earth. Well, the earth like many families, don't have form. Don't have any form. What do I mean by that? M me meaning that they don't have correct methods of how to do things. <laughs> Television is not your correct method. Music is not your correct method. Probably what your mom and dad and grand-grandmom, I mean grandmom and granddaddy did is probably not correct methods. <laughs> it gets me all the time. I, 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 I see these people that turn 100, 103, 105 years old. Well, how, how you do that? 
Well, I take me a good sip of whiskey every day. That's not a correct method. <laughs> and then the news commentators come back. Oh, my, my, my. What wisdom for us all. That's wisdom from hell. You see what I'm saying now when I talk about correct methods? Families who have no correct methods of dealing with unrest in the family, dealing with financial challenges, dealing with children who are disobedient, dealing with a spouse who, who doesn't want to, 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 to be in relationship with you anymore. Don't have, so the earth, like many families in Genesis 1 and 2, families don't have form. He says that they had no form and they were, and it says the earth was an empty waste, meaning that, that there was no fulfillment. There are families that are not fulfilled at all. And they have been families for 15, 18, 25, 30 years, but there's no fulfillment. The house is like a graveyard. There's nothing that is moving and alive in the relationship between the parents and the children, the husband and the wife. There is nothing that is happening in the family because there's no fulfillment. There's no satisfaction or happiness as a respect of the full developing of one's ability or character. Families filled with people who are not themselves. But they're what media has formulated them to be. Girls and daughters in families who are trying to be divas because they saw divas on TV. Married couples who are, well, married women who are trying to be the housewives of whatever sitcom that they see. There's no real fulfillment in their real identity. Married couples who are trying to live their lives out in ways, trying to, and, I, and I've been there, I've been there. I, I, me and Susan were trying to keep up with the Joneses when we moved to Atlanta. And we had to have the house, and we had to have the car, and we had to have the vacation. And I discovered that there is a difference between curtains and drapes. but trying to keep up with another identity because we were not fulfilled and satisfied in who we are because we had no form, but we were going to church. But we had no form. We had no satisfaction regarding the, 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 the development that we should have in God where our ability was concerned and where our character was concerned, but we were going to church says the earth was without form, empty waste, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Meaning that there are many families who are consistently, consistently, it's like clockwork, experiencing dark places in the members of the family's minds. Dark places in their bodies, dark places in their efforts to progress financially and relationally. And we just can't seem to get along. We just can't seem to have more money than month. We just can't seem to get into a better place. Sickness, disease, infirmity, wrecking us consistency over, consistently over and over, going through the same things year in and year out, cyclically dealing with this and that, showing up and overtaking us. It's because the family is a deep dark place and while you might have your driveway lit up with a 2020 car and you may have your wardrobe lit up with all the nicest clothes and you may have your job occupation and functionality lit up and everybody thinks you're wonderful but inside you know my family is a dark place and we're not even getting along and we're not even talking to one another. As a matter of fact, there are families right now where you're looking at two devices, a husband and a wife. You're watching two different devices of this method, of this message, because you can't get along. I speak to the spirit of division and 
schism and divide that was to skill and kill and destroy your family and I declare the unity of God the oneness of God I declare the power of God consuming both of you and the spirit of repentance release her release him in the name of Jesus and be made one by the power of God but there's just, just, just so much darkness over our families but we look like light none of this is unrare in families and that's why I'm talking about family right now something then happens in Genesis 1 to be the B part of it of the second verse the B part of it that changes the game the Spirit of God moves it says the Spirit of God was moving like he's starting to do in your family right now and hoovering like he's doing in your heart right now. Children, moms, dads, there been, there, there's a moving and a hoovering and a moving of the Spirit of God on your house and on your life right now. Watch this. From his one movement, one movement in Genesis 1-2, Verses through Genesis 2.15, we see God enter Adam in Genesis 2.7, and Adam becomes a living being by one move of the Spirit. We, we, we see all things changing because the earth was formless and void, and it was a deep chasm of darkness, but one move of Holy Spirit begin to change everything. See, see, all things change and are being made better by the presence of Holy Spirit carrying out what God says. That's what we see in Genesis. Much of the dependence of many of today's families is not in the presence of God. I, I, I've lived life well, the fulfillment of my family was in the presence of stuff and things. In the presence. In the presence. But it's only the presence of God that can rectify and change and strengthen and advance your family. It's not a new TV. It's not a new car. It's not money in the bank. It's not, I got kids in college I can brag about. It's not, I got new clothes. It's none of that, et cetera, et cetera. But what the pattern reveals to us from Genesis 1, always discover the pattern. What the pattern reveals to us is that that which brings form, fulfillment, and advancement to a family is God in it. The presence of God resting in a household. The first movement daily in your household needs to be Holy Spirit. Adam and Eve, the first family, God not only invited to walk with him, but hear this, they had the resident presence of God daily in their dwelling place. Daily. Daily. It was the preeminent presence. Not flesh, not fear, not, not, not anger, not bitterness, not offense, not indifference. The preeminent presence of a household must be what we see as the preeminent resident that is present in the garden, in the place where they dwelled, and it was the Holy Spirit, the presence of God. See, that, that, that's why starting tomorrow morning at 6 a.m., we're, we're doing Pursue. And, 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 and we'll, 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 we'll do Pursue every Monday through this month because my desire is that we would be individuals who become households who pursue the Lord. And from 6 a.m. until 6.45, we're going to pursue God. 
We're going to seek him, worship him, learn of him, learn how to pursue him, how to be in the presence of him, how to live with him. We're going to learn how not just to bring his presence into our lives, therefore into our homes, but how to maintain and sustain the presence of God there. The pursuit of the presence of God is what changes families. The presence of God wants to work in your family. What did God do? God authored family. And in authoring family, when we see in Genesis 1, he created the very ingredient that would hold your family together. And the very ingredient that has been lost for most of our homes is the presence of God. We've run him out by pornography. We've run him out by TVMA movies. We've run him out by arguing We've run him out by disagreement. We, we, we've run him out because reading something other than the Bible is more important than us. We've run him out because of the music and the musical content we listen to, the content of television shows that we watch. So much has been done. The disagreement between moms and dads, children's disobedience and rebellion, parents' anger toward children. Let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit is not to be grieved or quenched. And many of our homes have grieved him and quenched him. But the only presence, come on D, the only presence that will sustain your family is not the presence of marijuana. Been there, done that. Not the presence of alcohol. Been there, done that. Not the presence of crazy television watching. Been there, done that. Not the presence of arguing and fussing and fighting and complaining. Been there, done that. Not the presence of murmuring and backbiting and talking down one another. Been there, done that. But what you need is your family to be restored. And the only thing that can make that happen is the presence of God. And, and you have to cultivate that presence. I'm doing all I can every Monday in, in July. At 6 a.m., I'm doing all I can to help you cultivate his presence. So that the things that I pour into you, along with this message that I'll do every Sunday and Wednesday, every Sunday and Wednesday in the month of July, along with that, you will cultivate him in your house and in your home and become men and women and children who want the presence of God more than they want the neighbors to come over want the presence of God more than they want grandma or grandpa to come over. And I love grandma and I love grandpa, but they can't do what the Holy Spirit can do in the presence of my family's life. You want your money better? It's in the presence. You want ideas, witty inventions, you want to solve problems? It's in the presence of God in your house. Adam and Eve made room for the presence every day didn't say that God came every day to visit them, but we know one particular day he did come, but the presence was there always. Our sound system in our, in our house went down. We're getting it repaired just so we can pump worship through it. Just 24 seven, pumping worship through it, pumping worship through it, pumping worship through it. So when I come at Susan with some old crazy mindset, she can say, I'm worshiping right now. It's coming right through that speaker. Does thou not hear it? Creating presence, reading the word of God, rising early, making decrees and declarations, walking through the house, anointing everything, creating the presence of God. That's what we see in the garden. But then somewhere they chose something else instead of God's presence. I declare in Jesus' name that will not be your portion, but that you will choose the presence of God over everything. And I declare in the name of Jesus, the Lord will grace you to demonstrate. I mean, he will demonstrate for you how to carry out the creating of presence in your house. I declare changed worship, changed seeking, changed reading, praying, fasting. I declare the conviction of the Holy Spirit when we turn to television or music that we shouldn't be watching, anything that's going to grieve his spirit and anything that's going to cause him to, to move in a way that 
I don't need him to move because I need him here. My family needs Jesus. My family needs the presence of God. Man, you're sitting there and you need to let your family know we need the presence of God in this family. Woman, you're sitting there and you need to say we need the presence of God in our family. Children, you're sitting there and some of you need to make it known we need the presence of God in our family. Men, you need to let it flow out of your mouth. Women, you need to let it flow out of your mouth. Children, you need to let it flow out of your mouth. Even here in the sanctuary, you need to let it flow out of your mouth. In my house, we need the presence of God. We need the glory of God. We need to end invasion of God. We need the Word of God, the mind of God. We need God's glory. We need to turn our house over to God. We need to give it to Him. We long for your presence. We hunger for your presence. We want it in every room. We want it in every decision. We want it in every matter. We don't want to bring anything into our homes that would hurt you, God, that would, uh, uh, that would offend you, that would do wrong under your purity and your holiness. We need your presence, God more than anything and if you've already got a great presence let God know I want more of your presence more of your glory more of your innovation more of your creativity more of your koinonia I want more of your fellowship I want to learn more about you I want to see you in a different way I want to understand you better I want to talk to you and be talked to I want to have true communion and fellowship with you my house needs you depression needs to be destroyed oppression needs to be destroyed back talk and sarcasm need to be destroyed Defi and anger and bitterness need to be destroyed. We need your presence, God. More than anything. More than anything. You don't need a new husband. You don't need a new wife. You need a new presence. You need a new glory level. And he's willing and he's worthy because he can do all things. And he's able, he's able, he's able to dry your tears, he's able. You're not walking out, he's able. Don't touch that woman again, he's able. Don't touch that child again, he's able. You need the presence of God. Let him rest on the children. Let him consume the children in your household, in your bloodline. Oh God, oh God, oh God. You thought you needed so many other things. All you needed was the presence of God. And you had him one time and you walked away and God is saying, bring me back, bring me back, bring me back, bring me back in. Let me come back in. I'm, I'm not mad at you. I'm, I, I, just let me come back in and be God to your household. I'm back to my beginnings with family and with the household. And where I am honored, I will manifest great things I will do among those who yield their homes to me. Come on, wherever you are, just lift your hands. And... Come on, come on, come on. Just... God, I give my house up. I give it up. Every part of it, I give it up. Huh. I give it up. Come on, you know the things you need to quit. You know the things you need to start. I give it up, God. Now come and bring glory to yourself. Come on, we're going we're to commune with him right now. Just, just get your elements, whatever you have to drink, whatever you have to nibble on, just get your elements. We're going to commune with him. Don't lose the flow. Don't lose the presence of God now because he's going to do some healing in your family right now. He's going to do some deliverance in your family right now. He's going to release some power in your family right now through the blood and through his body. We remember you, Jesus. This is all about you, Jesus. We don't want households to show ourselves and our lives off. We want households that show you off. We want a nature and character in our house that is of you. We want your power in our homes, Lord Jesus. 
We want your glory there. We take of your blood that was shed for us on Calvary and we take of your body that was broken for us. And God, we repent of our sins. From the courtroom of heaven, we confess that we sinned against you and against you only. We've done evil in your sight. David said, grace me to act as I should, especially in my home. Oh God, we repent for the sins of our home. We repent for the sins of our family. The things my children have done, the things I've done because I live alone, God. The things I've entertained, the things I've let happen and go on. God, I repent for that. Mothers repenting, fathers repenting for words and deeds and thoughts toward one another that should not have happened. Come on, repent to the Lord wherever you are because the blood is going to wash you and the blood is going to wash away every door that's been opened by your sin, by your wrongdoings, by your shortcomings and the blood of Jesus is going to make you and your household whole. The word of the Lord said, as often as you eat this, do it in remembrance of me. We remember your body, Jesus. We confess and repent and turn from our sins, every wrong word, thought, and deed. We declare the door shut on any behavior that's not like you from the courtroom of heaven, God. Your word says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony and because we have not loved our lives unto death. And so, God, we stand in those things today. Wash us and make us whole. And, Lord, as we take of your body, we take hold of peace. Let us eat. We thank you for your body that was broken for us. And in your body is peace. Let it flow now out of our mouths. In your body is gentleness. Let it flow now out of our lives. In your body is love. Let it flow now out of our lives and our families as we remember that it all comes from you. And you're the reason why our families shall succeed and advance and excel and increase. And your blood was shed to overcome every work of the adversary. Your blood was shed to forgive our sins. In the name of Jesus, I declare that we release everyone in our family, your immediate family and the fa your extended family. Release them. Any offense, release them. Any word, thought, or deed, anything they've done, and yet they were wrong, release them. Release them just as Jesus released the entire world and forgave all of its sin at Calvary. Let your Christ-like nature release men and women and children, your own household and the extended household. Let there be nothing you hold against anyone. Release them, release them, release them. And I know it's hard to release them because of what they did to you. And they did it over and over and over and you felt helpless, broke down some barriers in your life. But I'm telling you, let them go. And when you forgive them, you're going to feel the Spirit of God come into your life, an army of angels coming to minister to you and to strengthen you and to make you whole and make you complete. But let them go. Everyone under the sound of my voice, let there be nothing you hold against anyone. Just as Jesus forgives you every time you ask for forgiveness, give them forgiveness. The forgetting might take longer than the forgiveness, but sometimes the forgetting happens with the forgiveness. God can erase things from your mind in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. He's God. Trust him now to release everyone in your family who's wronged you in any way, big or little or small. You need your family, oh God. You need your family. So let this blood wash away every offense and let it wash away every sin in our lives. Let it wash away every erected evil temple. Let it wash away every work of darkness that stands against us and works against us. Let it wash away all things and make us whole and complete. Let this blood that was shed for your forgiveness enter you now. Let us drink. And then release the blood of Jesus over your family. Over there, let the blood of Jesus cover my family. Let it cover their soul, the place of their mind and will and emotions. Let it cover them that my family would be moved by spirit and not by flesh. Let it cover. Let it cover my family. Let it cover every activity of our family. 
I feel the Spirit of God moving in your house right now. He's moving in your body and in your mind. He's moving in your mouth even. He's moving in your thinking. And there are people you got to release and let go. God's already done it. Just, just, just step into what God's already done. The Lord wants your family whole and healed and well. This is not the only message. This is just the beginning. And if you don't get the rest of it, then you'll be back at where you were before I ministered this first message. So it's what I want you to do. If you're a part of this, this, this fellowship at Life Center International, I want you to connect with everybody you know to tap in on Wednesday nights. I continue to build family, especially those that don't have a church home, don't have a place where they're worshiping. And if you're on with us today and you're streaming because God led you here, God led you here because of family. Well, I don't have a family because he's preparing you and equipping you that you don't go through the things that your mom and dad went through as they built family. Well, I've already got a family. Well, there's a place that you need to come and connect and worship. And there's a family you need to build out. And I want to lead you to lead your family. I want to lead you to lead your family. For some of you that have never confessed Jesus as the Lord of your life, today I offer him to, you, to your life. There was no way that I could be the leader in my family not serving God. There was no way. I had to follow God. A lot of times wise won't follow us because we don't follow God. You need to hear that. Christ is offered to you today, man of God, woman of God, children of God. Maybe there's a family out there. The entire family needs to come to Jesus today. You can do that. Just let him know, I want you to be the Lord of my life. I confess that you died for my sins and you raised from the dead. Now be the Lord of my life. You can reach out to KOG now, K-O-G-N-O-W, K-O-G-N-O-W and text 313131. K-O-G-N-O-W, text 3131 and 31. We'd be blessed to serve you and pray for you and cover you help you to continue in this discovery that I need Jesus. Woman of God, man of God, children of God, you can't have the family that God will bless, keep, and sustain if there's not salvation in the house. I don't care salvation comes to your house today just as Jesus told Nicodemus. I mean, just as Jesus told um, Zechariah. I declare it comes to your house today in the name of Jesus. Well, God loves you and he loves your family and he wants your family to be productive in the earth and mission statement out for your family. Who are we and what is it we're supposed to do? What have we been called to do and be? We can't keep going in circles and chasing stuff. We, we got to discover who are we? Who are we? Stop seeking personal identity and not knowing corporate identity. Corporate identity is important. The corporate identity of those who are part of this ministry is just as important as their personal identity, which is just as important as the identity that your family has and the purpose that God has for your family. I'm declaring in the name of Jesus that, that, that you will, heads of households, serve your families today. And Wednesday night, we're going to come back and we're going to bless God with our attentiveness and with our learning and our growing. I'm starting right at 7 o'clock. Starting right at 7 o'clock. And we're going to learn more about the family and we're going to understand more of the prophetic reasons for why God wants the family to be built up in times like, like these. It's crucial. It is crucial, but we are well able. Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I declare that for your house as, as well. I, I declare it for your house as well. But something else I was going to share, but I can't remember it. It'll probably come to me sometime, but pray that the Lord brings it to pass now if it's what he wants to do. But uh, we'll come back here on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock and we'll be built up strong in the Lord and the power of his mind. I love you. I love your family. And uh, I want your family to be the greatest family that ever walked in your bloodline, greater than your mama's side or your daddy's side. And now is the time. Be encouraged. Stand strong in the Lord and the power of his mind. I declare in the name of Jesus, this communion is sealed. Salvation, healing, deliverance is sealed and activated. I declare in the name of Jesus that the families of the earth will be the families that belong to God. Let it begin with us, Father God. In Jesus' precious and matchless name we pray. Declare these things done and so. God loves you. Take care. It's the Life Center International Family and Apostle Terrell. We're out. Peace.